Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to go over a quick tip for printing without supports. Well, without auto-generated supports. So you can see in the preform software here, we have um, supports on the bottom and we have some for the chin. And um, the idea is some models can be printed directly on the build plate. So to align a model to the build plate, you use the um, rotation tool and you use this select base. And if you double tap, it's going to um, pin that right down to the ground. So we can see pretty clearly that we'll probably need support on the chin area here, right right here. So this is the area of, of uh, concern that when there are slicing, uh, when our layers get built up to there, there's going to be little islands. And if you see our last tutorial, um, we'll talk about how to orient um, and avoid those. But uh, say for this example, we want to print directly on the build plate. Um, a lot of models are designed with this in mind, but uh, characters usually do not fall into this category very well. So um, checking the buildup of everything else, it seems to be pretty uh, pretty okay, except for the fact that his chin is in a pretty big overhang here. And that would just fall right off. So, okay, jumping ahead to see what my final output was, um, I created a simple support structure in ZBrush. Um, that ended up looking something like this and it allowed the model to be printed directly on the build plate and also fully support the um, the chin area here. So we're going to jump into ZBrush right now to see how I built that. And uh, this model printed successfully and I'll show you those images at the end. Okay, back into ZBrush right now. Uh, we want to generate the same type of supports that we had on our um, on the model that you just saw, and um, here is the uh, the support by itself. You can let me isolate that. Okay, so the first step in, into building a support system like this um, is using uh, Zspheres actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate. Um, I'm going to hide the uh, the old support that we had there and uh, jump over to. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to append, append, and then Zsphere. So now we have a Z sphere in our scene. Jump over to that tool and then hit the um, the W key, and that's going to allow us to position this tool um, wherever. And then use the E key, and we could scale it down. So what we want to do is uh, target the chin area here where the overhang is. And um, we want to scale it down pretty small. So we're obviously going to lose a little bit of detail in this hair area, but um, it's better than having the whole front of the face fall off. So what we want to do is position that Z-sphere. And then we're going to go back to our queue and then draw a sphere. And then instead of building this out like the branching structure right away, we're going to just draw it straight down all the way to the bottom. And um, Keep it nice and straight, and then we're going to scale this one up so it has a taper. So scale, scale, scale. So if you hit the um, the A key, you're going to see like a representative mesh of what you're going to get. And don't worry about that not showing up up there. I think that's just a uh, display problem. So um, go ahead and um, insert another Z sphere here, and then you can see we got a little bit better resolution. So that's the beginning of our support. Um, now, this is still a pretty thick contact point. So um, hit, hitting the A key, you can jump back and forth between the mesh and, and the Z-sphere. And then so what we can do is move this down and then draw another one right on top, something really small. And then I actually draw another one here. So keep in mind, we try to make uh, like 45 degree angles or thereabouts. And this can be moved over. And you can see that on this one here, um, it, you feel free to branch off actually and create a um, more supports that go along the chin. Now every model is going to be slightly different. This is not a... Um, uh, um, I mean, it's a pretty proven concept, but it's a um, for every character, it's going to be slightly different. 
Now this is a method of creating um, supports that are um, the support is actually going to print off of the build plate. We're not going to attach it to the model or anything um, or else we'd have to clean that area up. So um, that that's uh, one thing to keep in mind when when doing this is uh, so for example if we had to build a support from the earlobe um, we would have to do this uh, exact opposite uh, structure where it come to a really thin point on the cheek go to the thick uh, thicker bit and then come back in and go thin again so um, but this particular model is great because you can print um, print it right off the build plate and the support itself is printing right off the build plate so we can make this nice and wide um, and uh, so A, we can see what we got here so it's pretty close to what I uh, ended up making in the final in the final product um, let's jump back over to that scene there you go there's the final one so that I did um, I did three here and then I did about four in a row that all lined up so um, so I think I actually made these smaller as, as well so you can see the process it's fairly straightforward um, it's just a great tool in ZBrush using these z-spheres to um, make uh, supports for your model um, and these spheres can be used um, anywhere and um, we're going to go over the one last part about how to make this flat against that one um, because if you're going to print it on the build plate they both have to um, align perfectly so let's get this down All right so that's good enough for now and then if I wanted to have that third branching one here uh, Q and draw that off and attach that to that little piece of hair there just in case now the only downside of doing this is um, ZBrush obviously doesn't have a, a slicing mechanism inside of here so um, you're going to have to check you're gonna have to check this to make sure that you hit all the the lowest uh, the lowest points of the print um, um, in 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 your in your uh, 3D print software versus uh, being able to check the slice in here so, um, so this will go here all right so that's pretty good pretty much hit all those points so um, if you need to make this thinner so these are thinner that's fine um, these will hold up just fine so hey yeah, that looks even better than the original one I made. So, all right. So now we need to do. Um, uh, we basically need to cut that off um, from uh, going below the um, the level line here. So, the easiest way to do that is um, first of all make sure your perspective is off, so you get um, you don't get any warping. So we got a flat uh, a straight line underneath here, and then. Um, this mesh is not actually a mesh yet, so we got to make that a real mesh. So what we do is um, uh, scroll down to uh, Adaptive Skin and say Make Adaptive Skin, and that's going to output a new tool right here. And then we're going to have to append that in here. So go to go back to your subtool, hit Append, Append, and there we go. There's the real mesh, and we could hide the Z sphere. And now that's a real polygon. All right, so. Um, feel free to shift D or control D to um, divide this up once and uh, we're gonna cut this bottom off so the easiest way I found to do that is in two steps first we're going to use the mass tool which is control shift and then hit alt to um, hide and we're gonna hide underneath this line so somewhere around there actually because this polygon is not very dense, we're going to go a little lower like that just to get rid of some of that the extra overhang and then go down here to geometry and then um, modify topology and then delete hidden. Oh, we got to make sure we delete our lower sub D's. Um, I'm going to 
and then uh, delete hidden, and then close holes. So now we just created a, a polygon on the bottom. So the next step is to create a flat line between both of these meshes. So what we do, um, and I'm going to experiment with better ways to do this, but for now this is the pretty much the only way I know. So take these two subtools and then merge them down. So there's they're one object now. And um, and then what we're going to do is uh, go hit Control Shift and then go to your clip your clip curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip these, and we want to make sure we hit both of them at the same time. So just up enough, and then let go. And you can see that now our two bottoms of the support and the character are perfectly aligned. And the next step would be to export all these out as STL models and get them into your 3D print software. Everyone, thank you for joining us again for another Mold3D tutorial. Uh, please go to our website and sign up for a newsletter. And uh, definitely check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Mold3D. And lastly, I want to thank Giovanni Nackbell for letting me use this model for this uh, 3D print demo. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you, and we'll see you again.